evening, everyone. Can I have a show of hand, hands of who likes books, who likes to read? I do too. I'm an avid reader. I love to read. I can't imagine anything better on a rainy day than laying back on the sofa in front of a blazing fire in the fireplace and reading a book from cover to cover. But I don't mean literally cover to cover because I read more electronic books than I read print books. Probably the second favorite thing, if I'd have to leave the house on a rainy day, is to go to a bookstore. How many of you guys like bookstores? Show of hands. Me too. They're clean, they're light, they're dry. You can wander around all day reading snippets of this book and that book looking at pictures, taking out your phone and taking a picture of a recipe, and not even having to make any kind of financial investment at all. <laughs> and maybe that's the problem with the state of today's bookstores, because I've noticed a lot of bookstores are closing nowadays. So I wanted to look more into this subject, and in doing that, I came up with three main themes. And the first one is, how do we read? It was my theory that many bookstores are closing because more and more of us are reading electronic books. And after I got an answer to that question in my mind, the second thing I wanted to explore is how do people feel about print books versus electronic books? And then finally, I thought a little bit about some ideas that bookstores could implement to prevent themselves from becoming obsolete. So first of all, how do we read? Are we really reading more electronic books and is that why bookstores are closing? So Patty has passed out a handout, which is some research done by the Pew Research Center. And the first graph shows Americans' reading habits from 2011 to 2018, any type of reading material. And in 2011, 79% of people had read some kind of book during the course of the year, versus 74% in 2018. So actually, a good portion of our population doesn't even read any kind of book over the course of the year, and our readership is declining during that time period. There's a lot of different forms of entertainment other than reading, right? And people may be selecting other forms of entertainment besides books. Then the next graph shows the number of people who read a print book. In 2011, it was 71% and declined to 67% in 2018. So that surprised me a little bit. There's still the major market for reading is in print books. And it was my theory before I looked into this that there would be more people reading electronic books. When in fact, in 2011, 17% of all readers read an electronic book in the year versus 26% in 2018. So there is an incline, but it's not big chunk of the market that I thought it was. And then finally, audiobooks. 11% read an audiobook in 2011 versus 18%. So there's a steady incline with that. So other, other methods of reading are taking some of the share of print books, but it seems like print books are still pretty popular, 67% of the market. So I decided to ask my friends, how they feel about print books versus electronic books. And first, I asked my friend, Ia, and she's 53 years old. And she said she does read some professional journals and articles online, but when she reads for pleasure, she likes to read a real physical book. And it's kind of a nostalgia thing for her. It reminds her of her childhood, summer vacation, and her goal in life during that time was to read as many books as possible. So when she can sit down with a print book, it's just, it's a sentimental feeling. 
And then I asked my friend Sandra, who's 55, and she hates electronic books. She feels like Kindles are causing bookstores to close, and she doesn't even feel like it's reading. Reading involves turning the pages and tactile sense of holding a book and the smell of a book. So I asked people who were about my age, and I thought I ought to get the younger generation's perspective. So I asked my son, who's 20, and having grown up in the digital age, he surprised me. He said if, if he had a choice, he would rather read a real physical book. He likes to look at the pictures. That reminds him of being a little kid and having picture books. And so he prefers physical books, too. So it seems like, at least among the three people that I polled, there's a sentimental connection to real books. So how can bookstores capitalize on the fact that print books already have a majority of the market and people have a sort of sentimental inclination toward print books? I think it would be wise for bookstores to look at businesses that recently changed their model to adapt to the times. Shopping malls, for example. People can buy so much online, but we see shopping malls starting to reopen movie theaters again and have big arcades and big food courts so that they become a center for the community and they draw the community in. And we see movie theaters, too, make a change to a hybrid movie theater restaurant model comfortable chairs, they serve meals, even alcohol. So bookstores might be wise to implement some of those ideas and create a community hub. They could host Toastmaster meetings, they could host book club meetings, they could have a hybrid restaurant bookstore model and give out you know, free samples and encourage people to be not like me and hang out in the bookstore all day and buy nothing, but to, to buy something and to be a place for the community to gather. So in doing this speech, I was happy to find out that people still read print material more than electronic material. And I was happy to find out that a lot of people have a sentimental connection to books because that bodes well for bookstores remaining viable in the future and not becoming like blockbusters video stores on every corner in the 80s and 90s and they slowly closed because they wouldn't change their business model at the times. So I hope bookstores take heed to John F. Kennedy's words and I'll end with a quote, change is the law of life and those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. So that's how we read.